I wonder is Winston and Kathleen going to be able to watch it tonight? Good evening, good evening, everyone. Welcome to our An Hour with the Organist. Thank you all uh, who have sent in requests uh, for us to sing, play, and uh, enjoy this evening. Uh, apologies to those who did not. If, we, if you sent a request in and weren't able to play it, we have had loads, but we hope you enjoy uh, our selection this evening. Now, can I just stress, tonight is very informal. It is definitely not a concert, and we are definitely not ABBA. There's absolutely no doubt about that. Uh, We're just here to praise the Lord 
and we're just here to sing and allow you to enjoy some familiar hymns and songs in your own home this evening. You're able to sing as loud as you like in your own house, so it's wonderful, so please do that. Uh, when I was growing up, as you know, I'm a wee girl from the Moy, and uh, our Sunday school superintendent was a gentleman called Cecil Buchanan. And my last Sunday school prize that I got was actually the 1933 Methodist hymn book, and I brought it with me this evening. And you know, the first line in the Methodist in that book says that Methodism was born in song, and I think that's a wonderful thing to remember. So our first song tonight is actually number one in this hymn book and the, the other hymn books that we have, and maybe Edmund will mention those later on. It's great to have Edmund and Anna and, of course, the wonderful Noel with us who's going to be playing. But our first song tonight is number one in the, well, certainly the 1933 hymn book. Does anybody know what it is? I bet you're shouting at home. Yes, it is. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. So please join us as we sing that just now. Thank you, Noel. Shirley has told us that Methodism was born in song, and Christianity is a singing faith. Christians the world over are known for their singing and their music. And I think uh, all of us would agree that hymns and songs are an important part of any service of worship that we attend. We would feel deprived if we joined in worship and there was no singing, no hymns, no songs. But hymns and songs as we know them today uh, didn't appear much before the end of the 17th century. Now our next request is uh, the author of uh, the hymn is Francis Jane Alstein, who's, be who's better known as Fanny Crosby. She was blind from birth. She was a prolific hymn writer. It's said that she had a contract with uh, a publisher to write three hymns every week. And this request is uh, to God be the glory.
hard as you can at home. Uh, we're going to sing a couple of hymns together now. Just, uh, just now, we're going to sing the first one. I'll, ma- I'll praise my Maker, and that's of course a well-known uh, hymn of Isaac Watts. And then we're going to sing "And Can It Be," uh, again, an extremely well-known piece. Sing it out loud. Sing it out as loud as you can. My chains fell off. My heart was free. Doesn't get much better than that, does it? No. Now, June really asked for that one particularly. And June, I'm expecting you to be singing at your top of your voice in your house. So let's sing these two together, Noel. Thank you.
hope you're enjoying this selection of hymns. You will have noticed that we're not singing all of the verses uh, of each hymn. Uh, we have so many requests that we have been here too long if we sang them all. Uh, the importance of singing praise to God, of course, is a very clear command to us in Scripture. Uh, praise isn't an option. When we sing and praise, we are doing what God asks of us. Some of the scripture references, uh, oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, bless his name, tell of his salvation from day to day. Or Paul to the Ephesians, we are to sing and make music in your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God. And Paul again, uh, when he writes, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. Uh, our next uh, two uh, requests will be sung together. The first is Nearer My God to Thee. It's based on the story, the story in Genesis of Jacob's ladder, which is a symbol of the communication between God and us. Uh, the popular story that uh, it was played during the sinking of the Titanic, I'm afraid, can't really be substantiated. Uh, the second is The Rock of Ages, and this was written by Augustus Top Lady, who sadly died when he was only 38. Uh, he lived in Ireland for a time, he was a graduate of Trinity College, and he found faith uh, while he was in Ireland, while he was attending a meeting in a barn somewhere in rural Ireland. Now the first of these, uh, Near My God to Thee, is going to be sung by Anna as a solo, and then we'll join in Rock of Ages.
Christianity, of course, is a singing faith. Christians are known both, both historically and universally for their singing and music. Modern hymn writers are integrated all over our new culture of worship. And many of them are prolific. Particularly this guy called Keith Getty, very popular writer. Having written many, many beautiful new hymns and songs, this one is very popular and it's a beautiful piece. This is known to many. It's called Come People of the Risen King. And we're going to sing that now. So thank you, Noel. <laughs> service. Uh, C.J. Mahoney calls congregational singing take home theology because the best hymns and the best songs and I quote are a three minute easily memorised but biblical summary of important truths in scripture and most of our hymns and songs have plenty of scriptural references and background to them. Uh, we're going to uh, take the next three requests uh, together and they're going to be played by Noel uh, on the organ. Uh, the first is uh, by Cool Salom Shady Rill, an old hymn which we sing to the tune Belmont. And then What Shall I Do My God to Love, uh, 516 and Singing the Faith. And uh, finally, in this uh, compilation of hymns and tunes that earth and heaven combine 208 in singing the faith thank you Noel.
Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we're going to do another couple together, a couple of hymns that we're going to sing together, well-known ones again. Uh, the first one is, um, I will sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me. Gosh, I love that. I love that hymn. I love particularly the, the chorus in it. Uh, yes, I will sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me. Sing about the saints in glory, gathered by the crystal sea. Gosh, that needs lots of welly, folks. Make sure you're singing that out. And then after that, we'll sing a very popular and well-known piece. What a friend we have in Jesus. And we'll sing them together, Noel. Thank you. sing and we can often sing uh, what we can't say and hymns break down barriers uh, they, they cross barriers 
we're grateful to people from all around the world who have composed hymns and, and we share in them now as the source of some of our best hymns and songs. Now our next request is um, uh, the hymn I Cannot Tell. It's 350 in Singing the Faith, uh, singing it to the Londonderry air. And this will be sung as a solo by Anna. I cannot tell. I cannot tell why he whom angels worship should set his love upon us now or then, or why a shepherd he should seek the wanderers to bring them back. Lovely piece that, isn't it? Great. I love that bit where it goes. But this I know. Oh, I, I think that's brilliant. You know, I have heard this. But this I know. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful hymn. We're going to sing another one now together. Um, it's actually Tell Out My Soul. Now, um, this, of course, is based on Mary's song when she was told she was going to be the mother of Jesus. And uh, it's a beautiful piece. It has a great um, bit to it. You know, I love that bit where it goes, the greatness of the Lord and in God, my Saviour, shall my heart be glad. And that needs plenty of gusto. So we're going to sing it here with plenty of gusto, but we need you to sing it at home with plenty of gusto. And uh, we'll give it a go, Noel. Thank you. Tell out my soul. Oh, my God. 
we know that uh, whenever there's been a, a revival, renewal of religion, there's always been an outburst of singing. Uh, the Protestant Reformation with Martin Luther, we forget sometimes that he had poetic gifts and he loved music. And of course, in the 18th century renewal, there was another outburst of song, uh, which our own Charles Wesley uh, contributed largely to writing. Uh, it's reckoned over 6,000 hymns. And of course, uh, today, um, there's a renewal of worship and new songs uh, come along and we sing those uh, together with those that are more traditional. But we're now going to turn to Noel and uh, to another organ piece. And he's going to play for us an arrangement of the God of Abram Praise. Thank you all for that arrangement, the God of Abram praise. So our final two uh, requests uh, this evening are both uh, hymns by Charles Wesley. The first is really a morning hymn, and the person who requested this remarks that uh, the phrases day spring and day star refer to the rising sun after the darkness of night, and therefore it's an encouragement. Uh, in these times of, of lockdown for us. It emphasises, of course, that Christ is the true and the only light. The second hymn, and our final one, is uh, Love Divine. 
a hymn that's suitable for many occasions, and we've all sung it on different occasions. It has no fewer than 13 Bible references, so maybe it's something for you to do at home to look through and see how many of those 13 Bible references uh, you can find. Uh, Christ, whose glory, and then followed by love divine. guys and you, when we were singing, I can't be again, will we? She can't be beat it. Is that all right with you guys down the back? Um, back to Love Divine, well, they're getting sorted out. Change from glory into glory, till in heaven we take our place, till we cast our crowns before thee, lost in wonder, love and praise. My goodness, what a day, glorious day, won't that be? Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. I trust your lungs are stretched to full capacity. My sincere and grateful thanks to Noel Guest, uh, an amazing organist, and we are very blessed uh, to have such a musician. 
And that is the same for all churches. Your music musicians are precious gifts from God, and we thank them for all they contribute, no matter where they are in the world. Thank you, Noel, particularly this evening. Many thanks to the team at the back, the guys at the back. I'm going to give them a wave uh, for running things. And special thanks to Edmund, because oh, he's wonderful, and the fabulous Anna as well. We got sort of dragged into this whole event. I trust you've been blessed and uplifted, uh, and that your heart is lost in wonder and praise and love. So we're going to finish with uh, Anne Can It Be. Can we have that, give that a bit of a... You give her plenty of willy now. Boys, down the back. Um, well, I think I've only, I've only words for two verses, have we? We'll sing three, and sure, if you don't know the one, that we'll just, just hum along, but we'll know it. We'll know it. What do you see? Number two. Safe thing.